Let's go over a quick comparison between volume control, pressure control, and SIMV. Remember, SIMV is a hybrid of either pressure control or VC of volume control plus pressure support. So uh, this comparison can be tricky. But let's start. Minute ventilation. A minimum minute ventilation is guaranteed in volume control not guaranteed because as i said specific uh, the tidal volume is variable from breath to breath on pressure control and depends on the mechanics of that breath based on the pressure target just go back to my pressure control uh, video uh, but with volume control you can sit i need this amount of minute ventilation um, or this uh, minimum amount of tidal volume. SIMV depends. If you're using volume control with it, this will be true because it's volume control and pressure support. So you guaranteed the minimum amount of tidal volume minute ventilation for the backup rate plus whatever the patient pull on the extra breath because those will be pressure support. If you're confused, go back to my SIMV. SIMV video. If you're using pressure control, I should have used this. Then, if you use a pressure control, then this can be variable and there is no guaranteed set limit specific amount of tidal volume. All breath get support, of course. Yes, here. Yes, here. In SIMV, only the back upgrade. Anything extra will get only partial support. So, so no. Work of breathing, of course, will be less here, less here, more here, because any extra breath above the backup rate, it will receive only partial support or zero support, depends what you decide, so more work of breathing. Hyperventilation risk is higher here. Because every single breath triggered by the patient or the ventilator receive full support and the minimum amount of time uh, and that set tidal volume here depends I have to say variable this depends how much the patient is pulling on average on those breath but every single breath will receive full support from the ventilator so if the patient is pulling tidal high tidal volume, then there is a risk of hyperventilation. And here is less because only the backup rate receiving full support, the extra breaths will receive only partial support. The risk of increased proximal airway pressure or peak inspiratory pressure is higher here because it's a flow target. So the pressure has to go up and down to keep that flow rate and flow target constant here not true because you have a pressure target and you put a fixed pressure proximal airway pressure during the whole inspiratory cycle and here it depends if we're using pressure control right then there is if uh, there is n if we use Let's put it here. If we use pressure control, then if we're using volume control, then yes. Faster weaning, this is here is slower compared to here, compared to here. I'm not sure how statistically significant, uh, statistically different, if it's significant or not. Early use of respiratory muscles, of course, less uh, or using you, you're still using respiratory muscle, but less because every single breath you receive full support from the ventilation. The same thing here, here, only the backup rate, the extra breath, you will use your own respiratory muscle because you're receiving only partial support or zero support. Here, the oxygen should be the same. And there is no difference in mortality. Oh, let me just put it in a different. Uh, no. D 
difference. And the same thing, no difference. And the same thing here, no difference. And the oxygenation here is good as well. So this is a quick comparison. We'll come later on. I'll give you certain clinical scenarios and about switching from this mode to that mode because you'll hear different information, some confusing information, or the patient's tachypnic doing this and that, switch from this mode to that. We'll come to those scenarios.